Alrighty, let's do the solving equations and inequalities part of the test. So um, what's the difference, if any, when solving with inequalities? Basically, uh, it's the same as when you're dealing with an equal sign, but if you divide or multiply by a negative, the inequality sign has to change. Now we'll see that coming up in a minute. All right, let's start with the first question. Nice and simple, we want to get all the x's on the same side. So this plus 14x, we have to get rid of it. Now technically, what we're doing is we, to get rid of a plus 14x, we are subtract, subtracting 14x. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Oops, sorry about that. Right? So what we're left with here is 8x minus 14x, and on this side, 14x, take 14x, cancel. While we're here, we might as well go, let's get rid of this take 17. We want it to be on the other side. So to get rid of a take 17, we are going to plus 17. Sorry, you can't see that very well, but I don't really like to write this plus plus on both sides. We sort of do it automatically. So what we're left with is 8x minus 14x equals 33 plus 17. So that's what I'd like us to write without doing all of this plus plus and take take on each side. We just go, I'm moving, I'm getting rid of a plus 14x by subtracting, and what I do to one side, then I have to do to the other. I'm getting rid of this take 17, the opposite of take is adding, and I do that to the other side. So that's how we get that there. Okay, and now it's a simple matter of gathering our like terms. 8x take 14x is minus 6x. 33 plus 17 is 30, 40, oops, 50, and we're nearly done. To get rid of uh, the times negative 6, because we want to get x by itself, to get rid of a times negative 6, we have to divide by negative 6. Now some students are guessing, and they're going, is it 50 over 6? Is it this one? Which one is it? Well, only one of them is dividing by 6, okay? And it's this one. This one is dividing by 50. So it comes down to, can you read your mathematics? Now, we don't leave it like that because you can clearly see uh, both of those numbers are even. So always put your fractions in simplest form. You can use your calculator to do that, right? Your calculators are allowed in the test. You can pop it in anyway. Divide each by 2 and we get 25 over 3 and a positive divided by a negative. I'm going to pop that negative there. If you had it downstairs, it's okay. It just looks funky. All right. Beautiful. Now we go on to this one. The first thing we're going to do is pop that over 1. I don't like this divide by 3. So how do we get rid of a divide by 3? Yep, u times by 3. So we're going to go 3 times 2 minus 5x. We keep our greater than sign there. To get rid of this divide by 1, we times by 1. So that becomes 9x plus 4. Now obviously if that wasn't a over 1, if that was over 5, you times the other side by 5. It's that simple. We expand the brackets as per normal. And this question is reasonably similar to the one we just did before, except we've got an inequality there. We carry on as per usual. Uh, to get rid of this 9x, I mean, why do we want to get rid of it? We want to put all the x's on the one side. Personally, I would put this negative on the other side and have it positive, but I know you guys like to go to the left, to the left. So to get rid of this positive 9x, remember, always look in front. That's a plus. Opposite of plus 9x is take 9x. So we've still got our minus 15x there. We take the 9x. We keep our inequality the same. You might be thinking, what happened to my 6? Well, again, I'm looking in front. That's a plus 6. How do I get rid of that plus 6? You take it. Right, so on the other side, I've got the 4. Right, I've got my 4 and I'm going to take 6. We gather our like terms. I've got minus 24x is greater than 4 take 6 is minus 2. Now, to get rid of that times negative 24, we are dividing by negative 24. And this is where we have to go ding, 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 ding. Because I divided by negative, this inequality changes. All right? And we simplify 
negative and a negative make a positive and 2 over 24 cancels down to be 1 12th. Done. So the rest is pretty much the same as what we've been doing, right? This one has a little bit of a catch in it because that's a take 1 there. So you would expand as per usual, minus 28, less than or equal to, you keep the minus 13, minus 1 times 7 is minus 7, and a negative and a negative is a positive, right? Gather your like term, so on the left it's all sweet, minus 30 take 7 is minus 20. If you are someone who knows they sometimes get their negatives mixed up, or they get it wrong, you check with your calculator. Okay, now the work solutions are on day map, so you can have a look at those. I'm going to stop now because I think it's once we get the first bit done, we're all pretty good and then you should be able to carry on from there. Okay, um, we've got this next question. Why has it disappeared? Same, same old, we're just expanding our brackets. Um, just be careful again, a negative times a negative is a positive. You can stop the video and finish those, do it, and you've, as I said, you've got the solutions up on Daymap. This is none of our fraction ones. We looked at something like that a little bit before where we go, I don't like this divide by 3, so we will multiply by 3. To get rid of the divide by 2, we will multiply. It's cross-multiplying, so we end up with 3 times 3x. Take 4 equals in the middle and 2 times... 4 take x. And now you're going to expand as you would normally do. Get your x's on one side, your non-x's on the other. Actually, we'll just do this one. As I said, you could check with the answers, but we'll just do it so you can see the process. Okay, once again, we want our x's on one side. So this take 2x, we want to pop that on the other side. So we do the opposite. The opposite of taking 2x. Say it with me adding 2x. On the other side I've got the 8. To get rid of the take 12 I'm going to add 12. 9x plus 2x is 11x and 8 plus 12 is 20. So we end up with 20. Remember to get rid of a times 11 I'm dividing by 11. Is there a number that goes into 20 and 11? No, that's it. Okay, right with this one what we're now looking for are number, a number that 3, 2 and 6 all go into. And we want it to be the lowest number possible. Okay, So in our case, that number is 6. So I'm going to put everything over 6 on the left-hand side and everything over 6 on the right-hand side. What do I times 2 by to get to 6? I times it by 3. So what I do to the bottom... I have to do to the top. So that becomes 3 times 2x minus 7. What did I times 6 by to get to 6? Well, it was just 1, so it's just minus 1. Oops, minus 1x. What did I times 3 by to get to 6? I had to times by 2, so what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I get 2, 1 minus 5x. And now I can say, well, the tops have to actually equal each other because it cannot b that 5 over 6 equals 1 over 6 it just doesn't work so we can say therefore 3 times 2x take 7 minus x it has to equal 2 times 1 take 5x all right and now we expand and gather our like terms just like we did before so 6x take 21 take x equals 2 take 10x. So stop the video, see if you can finish, and then you can compare with the copy of the answers that are on Daymap. Okay, next one. Um, the only trick here is with this, do not you're not allowed to subtract the 3 and the 5 because there's a multiply in between there. So you need to make sure it's 3 take. Now 5 times 7 we go 35, a negative times a positive is a negative. 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 times x is 2x. Right, we're in the same situation as we've had before. Go through, gather your like terms, x is on one side, non-x is on the other, and away you go. 
and I've decided yes we'll do this one too. So 3 minus 35 is minus 32, take 10x, we've got the 12 plus 2x. Um, again I'd probably go to the right but you want your x's on the left, so we've got minus 10x, this plus 2x becomes minus 2x. We keep the 12. How do I get rid of this take 32? You have to add 32. So we get minus 12x is less than 30, 40. What do we get? 40, 30, 44. Okay, to get rid of a times negative 12, I'm dividing by negative 12, but hey, I divide by negative. So change your inequality. And then, of course, cancel. So finish that. As we said, compare with the answers. We're nearly there. It's been going for a while. Hopefully you've been stopping the video and doing stuff by yourself. Um, with this one, please make sure that you put the 6 over 1 there. And again, we're looking for what's a common denominator for 3 and 4 and 1. So this time it's going to be 12. What do I times 3 by to get to 12 by 4? So that's 4. x plus 2. What do I times 4 by to get to 12? I times that by 3. What do I do at the bottom? I have to do to the top. So it's minus 3. x take 5. Students made a mistake by not including the brackets. And here's the other one where we stuffed up. Denominator here is 1. You had to times that by 12. So you must times the top by 12. So that becomes 6 times 12, which is 72. A lot of students just put 6 there. So make sure that we do that. Okay, that's over 12. And so now we can just expand the brackets and basically the tops equal each other because we had the same denominator. So it becomes 4x plus 8, take 3x plus 15 equals 72. Can you please go on and solve that again? Check. Right, a bit of a worded situation here. We've got a rectangle. It's four centimetres longer than it is wide. So please, those who left it blank, no good. Make sure that we draw a rectangle. Okay, it's four centimetres longer than it is wide. Now, I don't know how wide it is. Let's call it W. How can I express four centimetres longer? Four more, so it's W plus four. Its perimeter is 64. To get the perimeter of a rectangle, it's 2L plus 2W, or if some of you prefer 2L plus W. So you've been told your perimeter is 64, your L is w plus 4, your width is w, and we now need to solve this. And I'd like to think that you can take it from there. Right? Don't be scared, just have a go at the worded questions. Um, number 5, 4 times a number is subtracted from 300. Do we know what that number is? No? Well, let's call it x. So we're going to say that's 4x. This is where you have to read it really carefully. We're saying 4x is subtracted from 300. So let's have a think. Is it 300 take 4x or is it 4x take 300? So read these. Which one says it's 4x subtracted from 300? I think it's this one. This is saying the second one here is 300 is subtracted from 4x. So that's not what we want. So check, and we've got equals the result, right? The result is equal, so that's what the equal sign means. Is equal to the sum, sum means add, the sum of 84, and double the original number. So double the original, our original number was x, so double 2x. And now just solve. And the best bit is, is that let's say you got that first bit wrong, and that you actually wrote 4x take 300. You might lose one mark there, but you still get two if all your algebra was correct. So you must show you're working. Oops. And last but not least, rearrange the following equation to make 
why the subject? So you did this in the previous questions. It was just a 2x and a 7 and whatever. So we're going to make this the subject. So let's get by itself first. So that means I have to get rid of this ax. Now again, you look in front, there's nothing there. So that's a plus ax. To get rid of a plus ax, we subtract ax. And now to get rid of that times b, we divide by b and we're done. So I hope that you didn't just sort of copy down that stuff. You just needed a little bit of a hint and then away you went and you made your corrections.